Well, good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, April 7th. I actually figured that out before I started recording. Welcome to the Prepper Guy podcast. I am Mark Boyle, and I hope you are having an awesome day wherever you live. <laughs> well, I'm going to try this view. Hopefully, uh, I've had to re- reboot my phone a few times from like hard boot or whatever they call that. And in my opinion, it is still a piece of shit, but um, I don't just run out and buy new phones. I got to wait until it completely crashes and burns, and then I can just go fix it under warranty. Saves me a hundred dollars and an update and changing my billing and monthly payments. So I'm a lazy, cheap ass hat, I guess. So hopefully this works because I kind of like this view, but um, it's a, it's a beautiful day, so we'll give it a try. Today I was listening to some some news. And then I, I read a few things uh, in the county in which I live, which is Cochise, Arizona. We got Sheriff Mark Daniels, who's been on the news a lot. A lot of people tell him to stop being on the news so much and just go out and do his job. But um, that's easier said than done because, you know, you look at Joe Arpaio, he stayed out of the news quite a bit. And he constantly got crucified and fucked over for doing his job. So I guess you got to play the news game quite a bit. You know, as a sheriff, <coughs> I would never consider that his primary job to be on the media all the time because uh, I elected him to do certain things. But most people in most counties don't understand the, the importance of your sheriff or maybe if you're in a parish, they have a different name, but there's a chief law enforcement officer in most all counties that are granted the highest authority in law enforcement because they're elected by the people of that state or in that county. And that's how, member it all passed down from the feds to the states and then to the people, meaning that even, you know, you could continue down from the states to the to the counties, to the cities, to the towns, to the un- unincorporated areas, and then to the people. But... Ultimately, it always ends up as to the people, which is us. So a sheriff is always the chief law enforcement officer. He is the biggest dog on that porch. And so people don't understand that, that all these problems that happen all across the country could be resolved instead of going to the police and having a press conference with the police and the FBI there. I'd just work it out with the sheriff. You know, tell the sheriff, hey, my police force, there's three bad actors. They arrested this guy. They busted them all up. You know, he went to the hospital. He's blind in one eye now because of your guards or whatever. This needs to be resolved. And before we turn it into a media circus and nothing gets done, we want you to go in there and investigate it and, and arrest these people. And we'll be watching quite closely because if you don't do your job right and the right heads don't roll... Because it was blatantly, you know, an abuse of power. Um, then we'll just, the next election, you're gone. You're out of here. Your job in law enforcement will be shattered. We will wreck your reputation. And even though you might have spent 30 years in law enforcement as a police officer and the FBI or wherever you work. And now you're our sheriff and you want to set back and do the right thing. We're going to ruin that. Because this wasn't just a bad case. I mean, the guy that was arrested allegedly committed a crime. He was in your custody. He got all busted up by these police officers at the jail. And and we expect something to be done. We're not saying that he was guilty or innocent. We're just saying that the man had a right to be protected. And that goes to these prisons. You know, you watch movies and stuff about these prisons and even though a lot of prisons are federal, they still are exist within a county and there's a lot of leeway a sheriff would have to sit there and go, hey, why is sodomy illegal in a state and federal level usually? 
And these people that are put in federal custody for white collar crimes, maybe little, you know, <coughs> slight little, you know, grievances, but the, you know, it's a federal charge, so they're in federal prison, and they're being gang raped and beaten and stabbed and shanked and having all their teeth busted out because uh, you know these prisoners want to use them as a sex doll without teeth in their mouth, and you know, and and your guards are responsible for the inmates safety and so therefore if they're they're being assaulted even though they're prisoners then that should fall back on the warden and 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 the guards you know and and maybe you should be more worried about their safety and keeping them locked up in their cells than free hbo and and gym equipment i'm just saying so see, all of these problems, and I'm kind of whitewashing here, but <coughs> could be resolved by your sheriff because he or she is the chief law enforcement officer of any given area or county mainly. So I'm watching this uh, thing and then I, I went to Facebook and actually was reading the article about how one of the more uh, you know I'm not going to say it's affluent but it's a bigger area you know outside of the town right by the border there in in an area called Palominas in Hereford for these homes set on you know one or two acre parcels it's a gated area I can't go in there and measure somebody's house without gate codes and all that. But somehow these illegals had gotten through there um, in, a, in a Dodge truck, and then it broke down or whatever happened, and so now they're all running around, you know, in this gated community, and the sheriff, you know, doing his job, really, tells people in that area, stay inside, you know, hunker down, uh, and we're going to find these guys. Okay, that all sounds really good at first blush. Go, oh, you know, yeah, that makes sense, Sheriff. Good idea. But then my question is, and would be to the Sheriff, Mark Daniels, my thing. It's like, okay, we have federal agencies called Border Patrol that are supposed to be watching these crimes as they happen. And this is my big pet peeve with Border Patrol, and I've said it before, and I guess I need to harp on it for the next fucking year just like Mike Adams does on the situation report because he feels so strongly against vaccines that the last five shows you know of his have been on vaccinations and vaccines and the dangers and all that so I guess you know I should rip on border patrol and the federal agencies in charge of our border and also the state agencies which is now once again falls on to my sheriff, to protect me from issues at the border. And, and then, uh, so a border wall fence line in the sand is kind of like your yard. That's your yard. Nobody should be climbing over your fence and getting in your yard. Now, if somebody's in your yard, and let's say you have a... It, three acre yard and somebody's in your yard in your swimming pool or something it doesn't mean that they're an illegal alien from another planet or country it just means somebody trespassed into your yard and you know they did because you didn't invite them in now that could all be resolved in court the person in your yard could sit there and go no I was invited into a barbecue what are you talking about? See, all that minutia gets settled in court. There's proof and evidence and discovery and all that stuff in court. But the minute you say illegal alien, now all of a sudden it becomes a different issue. It's no longer trespassing. You're making an accusation that this person is here illegally in our country, our yard. And so no, no longer is it a, a trespassing issue to where he was there to steal your food or something. 
you know, or your drain your pool and piss in it or whatever. It's now a, an illegal alien. Well, you know he's a trespasser or she's a trespasser because they're in your yard. You didn't invite them there. That is the issue. You're in my yard. Call the police. Have them trespassed off your property because you know that's your property and you know that person doesn't belong there. Well, in America, it gets bigger. See, our yard is our border. And so a lot of people can be standing by that border fence, wall, line, you know, geographical, you know, points, waypoints on a, on a satellite image, you know, map or something. They're on this side. They're in your yard. But now it's your country. So U.S. Border Patrol just can't run over there and go, hey, you're trespassing. Get back on your side. Why? Well, because that person could look at him and go, uh, I am on my side, dick. You know, this is, I'm an American. Oh, well, how do I, how do I, how do I know that? Well, you, 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 you don't have any right to ask me that. You know, I, I don't care how you know it or whether you do know it or don't know it. I'm here. I'm standing on American soil and because I'm human, you have to assume I'm an American here legally. Now, normally, if the laws weren't so effed up and heinous, you sit there and go, well, you're not speaking English. And according to the state convention, you know, 100 years ago or whatever it was, and every state's different, by law, you had to have so many people that spoke English. Because that was the language of America. So if you had a territory and you were carving it out and making the state of Arizona, and, and you had to have a big percentage of the people speak and read English and understand English. So if there were a lot of Indians that lived here and Mexicans that lived here, they had to have all learned English because that was our soil. And that was the rule. And a lot of states had to postpone or wait to become states <clears throat> to get the education level up to the point to where they spoke English. So now you can't do that. So you're a border patrol agent and you're like, hey, what the fuck you doing here? You know, you're sleeping under a tree and is all this litter yours and who are all these people? Well, trust me, if I'm out camping and a park ranger or a border patrol guy comes up to me and goes, hey, the fuck you doing here? And who are all these people and all this litter? Oh, well, I speak English. So I, I would sit there and go, dude, you're thin, treading on really thin ice. I'm a U.S. citizen. I have ID. You have now questioned me and you've accused me of false crimes because that litter was already here. Thank you to the, the, the sharp and witty you know, Border Patrol agents, I had assumed, but I'm not going to make any accusations, that all this litter was brought here illegally and spread all over here illegally because it's littering by someone else. And all these people, they're my family. So why don't you back the fuck up and we'll have a real conversation. See, now that's how you or I would handle it because we know we're U.S. citizens and we speak English. But Border Patrol can't do that because of all these laws and their hands are tied to a point to where they have to sit there and go, hey, we're chasing some guys that just ran through here. There's like six of them wearing pink tutus. And we're trying to figure out just what the hell's going on. And it's kind of funny. And we want to catch them and kind of kick their ass because they're guys wearing pink tutus. Now, you or I would be kind of drinking there, camping. And go, really? Oh, man, if we had seen it, we would have kicked their ass. No, man, haven't seen any six guys running around in pink tutus because we would have remembered that. See, because we speak English. Well, if the Border Patrol do that to illegal aliens or assumed, alleged, possible illegal aliens, but they're talking to just Americans that are looking at them going, 
uh, no, si, uh, comprende. Uh, now, you used to have the right as law enforcement to go, hey, wait a minute. Most people in this state, in this county, speak English. Why don't you speak English? Well, that becomes another legal issue, see. So they have to use these tricks to, to gain enough probable cause to, to question them. So you think of Mark, that is, that's just stupid. It's like, yes, it is. We have a fence or a border wall or whatever Trump called it and Biden shut down to keep them on their side and us on our side. Now, that doesn't always work because, like you said, if you build a 20-foot fence, someone will make a 23-foot ladder or whatever to get over that. And that's, that, that's reasonable. It's just a very visual line that says, hey, that side over there is yours and this side over here is mine. Just like a, like a fence in your neighborhood. This is my shit in my fence. And if you're here, I know you're trespassing because you don't belong here. And this is mine. And like I said, it gets a little blurry, but the reality is that fence is to sit there and go, hey, how, why are you on this side? And since you're on this side, I assume that you're in our yard legally and you're an American citizen. And if that person speaks English enough, can just sit there and go, yep, I am. So now if you're going to detain them and question them, you better have a bucket load of probable cause. Or you're going to end up in prison like Ramos and Compion, the two Border Patrol agents in this state from Arizona that ended up in federal prison because they assumed or profiled that the man they shot in the butt, quite literally shot him in the ass to make him stop running. <clears throat> that was probably just a lucky shot. They were probably aiming for his head or something, center mass, but whatever. He got shot in the butt. They detained him found out that he had drugs on him and he was a drug dealer and he was here illegally. So he was a drug runner. Unfortunately, when they chased him and shot him and then the evidence was found that it was, there were drugs on him, making their point that he was here illegally with drugs. Unfortunately, they had no probable cause and therefore, the evidence was thrown out of court, just like if they search your house by accident and they were supposed to be searching the neighbor's house and they find drugs in your house. That's not admissible in court because we have fucking rules for that. Now, I'm not going to make this podcast about rules, but so they went to prison for shooting a guy, an unarmed guy, and for profiling and all these other charges. Because there were federal agents. You just federal agents just can't be fucking shooting at people unless they have that bucket full of probable cause, which they did not. So you, you think about it as an American and why we have these rules, and you go, you know what, that does make sense because uh, first of all they should be doing their job properly. And if I get arrested or pulled over properly, I have less of a beef with it than if some just cop you know, has a speed trap set up. I can fight that and win that because there are rules that overlap other rules and, 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 and for a myriad of reasons I won't go into why these rules are good and why these rules are bad. So now the Border Patrol are in a, in a predicament to where they, they, there's all these people running around and they're like, who are you? What are you doing here? And they come up with all these games and try to prove shit just like a cop will try to say, you know, walk a straight line. I, I don't have to walk a straight line. I don't even have to get out of my car. I, I legally don't have to let him shine a light in my eyes because that's a weapon. And if you shine a light in a police officer's eyes at night, you will go to prison for assaulting a, a law enforcement officer. So they can't do that to you. So they're, they're stuck with all these makeshift rules because they can't prove you're driving drunk unless they can get you to try to say the alphabet backwards, which then they know you're drunk because not too many people could do that, even on a good day. So these are all, they're trying to get you to testify against yourself. And once again, we have laws in America for against that. Well, the Border Patrol has to follow all these rules too. And they can't just 
you know, have a checkpoint and pull somebody out of a car because he, you know, is eating a taco and wearing, you know, a Western shirt and has those, you know, bo boots that are a little bit, you know, silver tip, a little bit more Hispanic in, in design and culture than what we, you know, wear, you know, expensive, you know, Carhartt and, you know, <laughs> boots and stuff like that, you know. So you can't just profile him and go, well, you know, I, I yanked him out of his car and I detained him because he was eating a taco and he didn't speak English. You're, as a Border Patrol agent, are going to go to jail for that shit or get definitely reprimanded and maybe written up and maybe fired. So wherein lies the problem then? We say to ourselves as Americans, like, what the fuck? We're paying a fortune in Border Patrol you know, just that one agency, which, you know, if you look at their budget, is a glaring reason why they will never fix the problem. Because it's just like, why will Big Pharma not, not cure cancer? Because there's no money in curing cancer. There's a grip of cash in just treating it. And the border is the same way. There's a lot more money in treating that border, patrol or border problem than actually solving the border problem because come on politicians are no better than big pharma or any other company that doesn't want to fix the problem because they're making way too much money in not fixing the problem and just treating it so what we have is an area to where the border patrol should be standing or sitting there watching people's boots hit the ground and then at that very minute, you now have proof. It's no longer alleged. I, a federal agent, saw this man commit a crime. I am therefore detaining him and questioning him because I have buckets of probable cause. I watched him climb that wall. I told him to stop because the minute he got on this side, he was going to be arrested for breaking our laws. He continued to do it. And then when he dropped down, he tried to run, which is a resisting arrest charge. So I, I can literally throw the book at this dickweed. And I have all the probable cause the judge would ever need. Well, then that would solve the problem. See, now problem fix. You know, $3 billion budget is now reduced down to payroll for a bunch of people to stand on the border and, and, and arrest people. You know, might even give them the chance. It's like, you know what? I, I, I have another 20-foot ladder here. If you crawl back over there, I'll leave you alone. You are technically being deported immediately. You have a choice of being arrested and, 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 and go to jail for breaking our border laws, which are pretty extensive, really. And then I see drugs on you, and this girl here with you said you raped her. So I could throw the book at you, and not as an illegal alien, just as a person that raped carry drugs and everything, I, you know, whether you are a U.S. citizen or not, I don't know. You could be a drug runner that has a U.S. citizenship and you just go back and forth because our borders are like a sieve. And so, uh, you know, you're going to be in a shit ton of trouble. So I would recommend you climb that ladder and get the fuck out of here. And, and maybe the next guy won't catch you, but uh, he's 50 feet over that way watching what's going on right now. So you got a long way to walk before somebody doesn't know what the hell's going on. And we have people setting every 100 feet, you know, or 200 feet or whatever line of sight, you know, to where we can run over and help you, give you backup, two-man team or whatever. You know, yeah, would it be expensive? Sure, it would. But not as expensive as buying helicopters and radios and you know, you look at their budget and you really break it down line by line. Just the fucking pencils cost more than I make in a year. So if they're just sitting there, it'd be so much easier because then they're U.S. Border Patrol. Hey, dude, you're under arrest. I just watched you climb the fence. You drop down. I see drugs on you. I searched you because I saw you break, a, break the law and commit a crime. So I have probable cause. I searched you, found this, found that. Ask the girl you're with. She said this. You're both going to jail. She's probably here illegal. We'll figure it all out. I'm handing you over to the deputy here from the sheriff's department. He'll be here in 10 minutes. And uh, you sit there by that tree. You're handcuffed to the tree. Don't move. Well, you can't move. 
Okay? No more nice guy shit. Sit there and shut up. And then you catch the next person and you make a little chain of people. And then when the bus comes around from the sheriff's department, they take them all in and they run them through their thing. They, you know, they put them in a county lockup, not a damn facility. But if you have a facility, that's fine. You know, give them a shower, clean them up, throw them out in front of the judge. The judge goes, uh, here's the evidence against you. Um, we're not going to give you a trial date because we don't want to feed you for three months in jail. So, uh we're going to go with the, the video camera. You're here illegally. You don't have any rights. We really don't give a shit anyway. So um, three years in jail for breaking our laws and just coming in our country, at which time when you're released from jail, you will be put on a bus and taken back to Tijuana or wherever. We don't want you here. Don't care about you. Don't give a shit. The only food and services you're going to get out of us are going to be what you receive in jail or federal custody which we will feed you and take care of you. And our guards will make sure you don't get gang raped, which is what I was talking about in the beginning. And, and then you're going to go home. And the girl has been sent back home uh, with, you know, with clean clothes and said, you know, stop trusting these guys that are going to rape you again, stupid girl. We don't really care about your sad song. We're not giving you a home in America to have your illegitimate baby. Go away. You know, you came over with them. You broke the law also by just stepping foot in America. So we're being really nice here. Cleaned you all up, sent you home, took your testimony. The guy's doing, you know, five years for that, 15 years for r smuggling drugs. And when he gets out, whether it's parole or whatever, and he's become a stellar citizen and a Sunday school teacher, he's going to be sent back to Mexico where he can teach Sunday school over there. Because everybody seems to find Jesus in prison. So, anyway. See? So, I, that was kind of a tangent. But that's how it needs to be handled. So, what happens when we're doing it the way we've been doing it for the last 25 years. And just going, trying to round them all up 50, 60, 70 miles from the border. You have no evidence. You have no probable cause. You have nothing. You have to assume they're U.S. citizens because why? Because they're in our fucking yard and no one saw them jump the fence or walk across the line. Whatever. See, nobody's paying attention. So once they get over here, now we have to assume they're citizens and blah, blah, blah. So you got Border Patrol chasing them around through a neighborhood now and the sheriff and the police because the police have to do it and the sheriff has to do it because Border Patrol has no authority. See, because there's no proof that they're illegal. There's a mountain of uh, looks like, uh, smells like, quacks like a duck, but we're not sure it's a duck. So Border Patrol now can go set down back at their headquarters and eat some more fucking donuts and still not watch the fucking border. But hey, they get to drive around in really cool expensive trucks that we pay for and round up people suspected of being illegal aliens, see? Because nobody, nobody saw them break the law. So there are no credible witnesses. See, so that would be like, that would be so great. Like if I could go into a bank and everybody couldn't see and all the cameras were out and then I just walked in there and said, give me all this money and took all their money and then walked out the door. And, and then when the dye pack went off, I just threw it down on the ground and kept on going. And then I spent the money and, and a week later, some FBI guy comes here and says, hey, did you rob that bank? <laughs> no. Well, you got that, that dye on you. It's like, oh, no, that's paint. Well, it looks like a dye pack. It's paint. Oh, well, I can't prove it because I didn't see you rob the bank. Uh, you, have all, uh, you have some of this money with the, the, the ink on it that we saw you spend at the Circle K. It's like, yeah, I got that from somebody. You know, I think when I bought gas last time, I, I broke a $100 bill and he gave me this. I thought, wow, that's fucking weird looking. Somebody must have got paint on it. Maybe the same painter I shook hands with to get this shit on my hands. I don't fucking know. And see, I don't have to worry about it. You know why? Because I'm innocent until proven guilty. So uh, you go continue to uh, search through the weeds and, and find your evidence. But for now, I'm going to enjoy my new big screen TV I bought. 
Oh, where'd you get the money? Uh, excuse me, I don't ask you where you bought your clothes, dickhead. It's none of your business where I bought my big TV and where I made the money. You know, for all you know, I'm Bill Gates' illegitimate son. Get the fuck out of my house. And that's how stupid it is. That is, in a nutshell, how stupid it is. Because they're investigating a crime that happened 40 miles away from where the bank was actually at. Nobody saw anything because it happened in the middle of the night. And, and people could sit there and go, how'd you get in the bank? It's like, I just fucking walked in. There was no one there. And all the money was just laying on the counter. So I picked it up and walked out. Well, didn't somebody see you? I don't know. And so, you know, a week, a month, a minute after I walk out of the bank and I go to the Circle K and I spend some money and they're like, where'd you get that money? It's like, what? Shut up. Who are you talking to me? Well, we just noticed that the bank front door was wide ass open. It's like, yeah, not my problem. And we think you took a bunch of money. Well, you have a good time proving that. Did you have any cameras? No. Any witnesses? No. Did anyone hear my voice? No. Did anyone videotape me? No. Did anyone see anything? No. Oh, so just because I'm in here spending a $50 bill or a $20 bill that happens to look like a $20 bill that might have been sitting at the bank, because they all look alike, you're going to detain me and question me? Excuse me? Uh, I got coffee and a job to go to, so uh, let me buy you a donut and then get the fuck out of my face. Do you see? Does the American see it? Because, see, you know, I talked about this a while back. You know, it's like people will listen to Tucker Carlson or Anderson Cooper, and, and they lay out a really great line of evidence. It's like they will take the problem that every American understands at a basic third grade level, that the reason we have a, a, an illegal alien problem in America is because the bank is wide open and no one is there and no one's watching. And even if I had to get a 20-foot ladder to climb over the wall of the bank to get in and take all the money, no one saw it. They assume it was me because I happen to be in the neighborhood, but that is not proof. So we all know on a molecular, stupid ass kindergarten level that that is wrong. It's like a kid will sit there and go, there's a bug in my milk. Well, do I need Anderson Cooper to lay it out for me? How that bug has no germs and didn't drink that much. So don't worry about it. No, there's a bug in my milk. Get it out. Now, once a two-year-old baby will sit there and be happy. You pull the bug out of his milk, throw it in the garbage, and the kid will drink the milk. Now, a five-year-old might sit there and go, wait a tick. There was a bug in my milk. He probably drank half of it and then realized he was drowning, shit himself, and now that's in my milk. You threw the bug out, but I'm not drinking it. See, now this is just five- and six-year-old level logic here. So it, it pisses me off because I watch these shows, you know, I never watch Anderson Cooper hardly ever, except when he did a, a documentary on the Vanderbilt family because he's part of the Vanderbilts, which you would think he'd be a capitalist fuck and not a socialist commie bastard, but whatever. And, uh, you know, so I, I watch Laura Logan and Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity and they lay it out so fucking good. And what are they laying out? Well, they got names and and facts, and signed documents, and Bob said to Ju- Julie, and Julie then went and gave this piece of paper right here to that guy, proving collusion. It's like, if it proved it, somebody would be in jail. No, it's more hearsay, bullshit, unsensed, substantiated, not even evidence of a crime. So it, it irritates me because they're getting paid millions of dollars for saying what you and I already know. The problem at the border is pretty simple. There's no one at the border watching crimes be committed. And all of the, the nuances and the bullshit that we talk about at nauseum for 20 fucking years or more is about everything that happened once they committed the crime and got away with it. Well, we're trying to arrest these bank robbers that seem to keep robbing banks. 
We have no pictures of them. We don't know who they are. Some of them are wearing bank robber tattoos. So we assume that they're bank robbers, but we still can't prove it. But we're going to detain a bunch of them and get our asses sued. And then they're going to end up with brand new uh, Escalades on the taxpayer dollar. And meanwhile, we're going to continue to bill, pilfer, and, and rape American public for billions of dollars in taxes to, to continue to not do our job. Welcome to America. And, and if you're illegal, go get a job and start paying taxes because we don't really care how you got here. We just want more of your fucking money. Do you see? So the analogy is, is pretty clear. If somebody's in your yard, you can go get them trespassed off. Why? Because it's your yard and you know it. And there's a defined fence that says, this is mine. You're not my family. You're not anyone I know. Hence, you're trespassing. This is our yard. There's kind of a fence, kind of a line there. But when you're in our yard, which is, you know, America, we can't really say for sure, you're not my friend. I don't know you. You're not my family. You're hence trespassing. You can't do that. Why, Mark? Why can't you do that? Because we have fucking laws that say you have to have probable cause before you even ask them, why are you in my yard? So it quite literally is like a bank robbery where no one's there. The money's laying on the counter and all over the floor. And the door's wide open. There's no alarm going off. Nothing is happening. And quite literally, if you walked past that bank and didn't stop and pick up as much money as you can find, you're an idiot. I would do that. I would walk in and go, hey, Juan, why is, why is there money laying here and nobody's around? It's like, I don't know. It's been like this every time I come by. Every night I come by. No one's here. No one's watching. The video cameras aren't working. And that's not evidence anyway because it's dark and I'm wearing a hoodie. And I pick up a couple thousand dollars and then I go buy shit. And the next night I come back and it's the same fucking thing. Every day. Every night. Every week. Every month. For the last 20 years, I've been walking by this bank, picking up a 1000 or 2000 depending on you know, how much is laying around. Somebody else might have got more. And I just do it again. Now, are you going to sit there and go, well, why do you do that? That's morally corrupt. Why would you? You're some, but that's someone's money. Or are you just going to go, huh, good idea, and pick up a couple thousand dollars yourself? So I, I can't, I can't, I, for the life of me, cannot figure out why our politicians, as smart as they are, because they're like, you know, Chuck Schumer, well, he's the smartest fucker on the planet. And if he's not, ask Nancy Pelosi. She'll back it up. He'll lie. They'll all swear to it. Why they can't figure out this basic, simple logic. And I, I can answer that. Because they already know the basic simple logic. And they're fucking us. Because now they know border is a hot issue. Oh my God! There's thousands of undocumented children now. We got to feed them. And it's like, oh good. We'll, we'll blame it on Trump. Everyone will blame it on the Democrats. The remainder of the country will blame it on the Republicans. And in the process, we'll sit there and sing this sad fucking song and we'll get billions of dollars to fund some other stupid ass fucking program that they will create. Just like Vision Quest is making millions of dollars taking in these, these children. Undocumented? You don't really know if they're undocumented because uh, nobody saw the crime. So they're, they're, it's, it's all money. It's fucking money. Money, 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 money. I'm going to park here for a minute before I order my, my breakfast. Let you watch you know, people drive around. See that building way over there next to AutoZone? 
is Department of Economic Security. See, there's another program designed to take my money. So the politicians know because they created it. And they're making a lot of money off of it. And they're skimming money off of it for their pork to their states. And then the states are skimming money off of it. And it's all trickling down to other people that have businesses that, that own Vision Quest, let's say, that are making money. Or their employees that happen to be their friends or their cousins or their monkey's uncles that are making money. And they, yeah, they pay taxes too. So it's kind of like a big filter, but it's not. See, because the country would be doing better without spending Fifty billion a year or whatever on border patrol. We'd be doing better if we didn't have a, a, a trillion dollar military budget because the problems were being solved differently. Because we got the biggest bombs there are. So you you come into our sandbox or our yard, we just blow your little shit village off the map. And go there, problem solved. Stay the fuck out of our yard uh, where we're going to attack you. Well, when you do, we'll blow you up or we'll get blown up, whatever, but we're not going to spend trillions of dollars. See, all that money that's filtering around this big circle, you pay, I, I don't know, you know, you, you pay a dollar to this bullshit, really. So we all look at it, it's like, well, I, I got a dollar. It's for the border. It's for the children. And then a hundred of it ends up in your neighbor's pocket because he works for Vision Quest. And then he gives a dollar. That's not a bad return on investment, really, when you think about it. But the reality is, it's, it's reallocation of wealth. They're taking all this money, and they're not fixing the problem, and that pisses me off. So the one thing I did not talk about that I'll wrap it up with, all of this madness that you and I see as madness, and yet we don't have a show like Tucker Carlson, and we can't blather on for 40 minutes and make $2 million a, a year or whatever, or 5 or 10 you know, pointing out all this really important articulate shit that no one fucking cares about because the problem's still not solved. These guys running through this neighborhood have basically created a hostage situation. Talking about banks, bank tellers are set. Don't set off any alarms. Don't do anything. If the note says, give me money, no die packs, do exactly as they say and let them leave the building before you hit an alarm because otherwise you have a bunch of customers in here and employees of the bank that are now hostages because somebody did something stupid. See that you'll get fired for that. If you work for a bank, you literally get fired for that bullshit. So border patrol has, has dropped the ball and now the people are in the neighborhood. And now the sheriff has to tell the people in the neighborhood, hey, we got a hostage situation here, basically. You're all hostages and need to stay in your house until we find these bad guys. If I was the mayor of a town, I would be going, wait a minute. We have this 50-mile buffer around, you know, our county that's like runs, you know, parallel with the border 50 miles north to your next checkpoint. And everything in between our are desperate, evil, good, bad, miserable people that are coming here from another country for a better life. And if you trap them in this 50-mile buffer, they might fucking do something to hurt my citizens. Hence, you've created a hostage situation. And if you don't set off the alarm until they're past that 50-mile thing... <laughs> You might as well have just sent them the money for robbing the bank. So does, does that make sense? Because I'm going to kind of continue to harp on it for a while. Because my county's right in the heart of it. There's been three special city council meetings because of the vision quest and these undocumented immigrants. And, and people are freaking out about it. And I'm kind of pissed about it because, you know, I used to live in an area, you know, I still live in the same area. Oh, my keys were in the vehicles. My doors weren't really locked. I didn't really care. And now everything's locked and the keys are on a fucking key thing in the house to where I can keep track of my shit because somebody might just come wandering through and fuck up my crap or steal it. And then I need it the next day. And now it's gone. Sure, I got insurance, but it's gone. I needed it. I needed it that day for that job right then. And now I've lost money. And so now I have to file another claim with the insurance company. All because nobody did their job and people are like yelling at the city mayor going hey you're taking in illegals 
that's a federal offense. You can't aid and abet, uh, you know, illegal illegal aliens. That's it's, it is a federal offense to give them aid and comfort. It's treason, basically. And 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 I and I'm really shocked that the mayor hasn't said, well, uh, nobody's proven that they're illegal, so they're children that need help, and uh, so I'm not breaking any laws. I'm just trying to feed the little children. Leave me alone. And then, then somebody go, what do you mean they're not illegal? They're, they're undocumented. It's like, we don't know that because, see, nobody was standing at the border when they came across. We didn't see them come across. Sure, you can watch the news, and there they are rowing across on a, on a boat, and then they come off, and the Border Patrol fucking help them up and then detain them and all that. But still, you know, now you have evidence. Is it going to go to court? No, they're going to get a court date five years from now. And then what that border patrol is like, yeah, that's me in that newsreel there, that video helping that girl up there. It's like, oh, okay, she shouldn't be here, but she is. So she's already going to school here. It's not fair to throw her out. So, so why, even, why even bother? See, why bother? So they're, they're technically, according to the, the system we have allowed to be set up by our politicians, they're here legally because we haven't proved they're here illegally. So therefore, the mayor's doing nothing wrong. Vision Quest is taking in and raking in millions of dollars for any no other reason than that's why they're in business and some sucker's going to give them money to take care of these kids. I would too. So there you have it. I'm done for the day. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope some of this makes sense to you. Um, you don't really have to do any due diligence. Just write your sheriff and tell him, fucking do something. Love you all. Enjoy the invasion. Bye-bye. We made too many compromises already. Too many retreats. They invade our space, and we fall back. I'm your huckleberry. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. That's just my game.